Hello, this is Chucky from C. Delano Photography, and today we're going to take a look at Silver FX Pro 2, which is part of the Nick collection. Now, what is it? It is a black and white film plug-in for Lightroom. Now, you can use it as a standalone, but today I'm going to show you how to use it as a plug-in. Now, at one time it was owned by Google. Now it's owned by DxO Mark. So if you jump on over, I'll put a link in the description so you can get it if you want it. Now, let's take a look at my Lightroom workflow. I have this photo of old Sadie, number 1242 from the Union Pacific. It's sitting at Lions Park in Cheyenne. And it looks like a good photo, but I think it would look a lot better in black and white. What I normally do is I scroll down to the bottom when I know I'm going to use a plugin and I enable the profile corrections for my lens and my camera, which was a Tamron 24 to 70 G1. I'm going to remove any kind of chromatic aberration. And then I am going to do cropping and that's all I'm going to do. And the rest of it I'm going to do inside the Nick collection. Now I want to get rid of this pole right here and then I want to get rid of some of these branches up there. So if I select the middle and I hold shift it will crop both sides at the same time. Now that's good but there's still a few strays right there that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and bring in that one side just a little bit more. I'm pretty happy with where that's at. Maybe I bring it up just a little bit. I don't want to cut too much out of that bronze statue that's there. And then when I'm done, I'm going to select done. Now, if you right click on the photo, you can go to edit in. As you can see, I have a lot of different plugins and I use them for different types of things. But in this case, the Silver FX Pro is a great black and white film simulator. I'm going to select that one. It does turn your DNG or your raw file into a TIFF because it can't edit the actual raw files. So that is one downside to this particular plugin. I'm going to use a copy with my Lightroom adjustments because it has the crop in it. So I'm going to select edit and it's going to take me to the NIC software interface. I'm going to take you through the preset library. All in all, you can see that there are 38 different presets broken down into different themes. If you want to use vintage, these are some really great ones right here. You have a real light sepia tone right there. And if you want it a little bluer, it's more of a, a cyan type tone. But I'm going to select all so that you can see all these different types of presets in the library. I'm going to stop right here because it's got some great ones like high key if you happen to be doing some black and white portraits. And then if you happen to do landscapes, I like to use this one called high structure harsh. Now, as you can see, that brings forth a lot of the details in the shadow, but we've still lost some detail in the shadow over here. Uh, once you've edited all this, you can create a custom preset and put it in your library. I'm not going to cover that. I just kind of want to show you what the capability of Silver Effects Pro, but just know that you can add uh, and import different types of presets. You can also save your own and it puts it right here uh, in these two little drop down areas right there. But the most important part is, is that we want to go onto the right hand side right here. At the very top, we have our global adjustments. We have brightness, contrast, and structure, just like you have in Lightroom, but you can do this by highlight, midtone, or shadow, or if you want to dynamically let the software pick it for you, you can brighten your image right there and it will do it through some sort of algorithm right here. And then when you look down at your histogram at the bottom, you can see what our photo looks like uh, in the dark side right here. It's a little dark and then on the light side right here, it zooms up to the top. So we're going to correct a few of these things. But right now I want to bring my shadows up just a tiny bit here on my brightness. These are just real subtle. And if you watch the histogram, the dark side right here is being pulled up as we do that. The next adjustment is the contrast adjustment. You can do a global run right here, or you can pick your whites and blacks. If you want to have it a soft contrast or a hard contrast, 
depending upon your photo. I'm going to leave this alone right now. I'm going to go into structure, which is similar to a clarity slash sharpening right there. So right now you can see that it's at 33% and that is done partly to the midtones right here. But what I want to do is I want to increase the structure of the shadow. So I'm going to bring up the shadow structure a little bit so we get a little bit more detail inside this dark area. And then I'm going to bump up the fine structure right here so the edges and everything are nice and crisp. As we scroll down, you can see the tonality protection. What this does is it protects you in case you decide that you're going to blow out the highlights or you're going to make the shadows too dark. This will protect you from ruining your highlights or ruining your shadows. I'm not going to use that right now. I'm going to jump to the selective adjustments. This one's pretty neat. Um, the thing about this one right here is, is a lot of people don't know how to use it, but if you click on this and you drop it on an area that you want to brighten, I'm going to drop this right here. It gives you all these little sliders right here. And if you see, I'm adding some brightness to this. And as you can see, it's just doing it to the area, just the dark area. And I think that's really powerful. So I'm going to bring up the darkness just a little bit right there. Because it, I lost some of my contrast here, I do want to bring up my contrast, which is going to make it just a tiny bit darker again. And I don't need to play with the structure because I've already done that up here. So this control point and the selective adjustments is just really powerful part of Silver FX Pro. The next one we have here is the color filter. If you're ever shooting black and white photography, sometimes you put a filter to filter out some of the different wavelengths. You have the infrared all the way to the ultraviolet, and depending upon the color filter you use is what you can block out from the actual photo. Now, I'm not going to do this right now because it seems like the photo has everything that I want in it. It's got the whites, it's got the darks and the shadows right there, and there's still a lot of detail in the snow right there, so I'm not going to mess with this, but it does have that ability to add a color filter to this particular photo. The last couple things I'm going to show you are the main reason why I'm here and I like using this, and that is the film types. Now each different type of film type has a certain amount of grain sensitivity and levels right here, but I'm just going to select the presets. Now if I scroll down here, you can see that the photo is changing depending upon which one I use. The ISO 32 is many of the ones that were used for landscape photography. The ISO 400, of course, is a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more grain all the way up to the ISO 3200 for night photography. But since this one is a landscape, I'm going to pick something between 32 and 100. So I'm going to scroll over these until I find one that I like that doesn't take away too much of the sky. So let's look at the Ilford. The sky looks really nice. Uh, the Agfa, it brightens things up a little bit, but doesn't really change the sky too much. The Fuji brightens the sky, and it also brightens this, but it does look really nice because this particular uh, bronze statue is, uh, the details are pulled out more on that. And then we look at the Ilford Delta, and then the Kodak T-Max. And I really like this Fuji Neopen A-Cross right here. So I'm going to select that one. Now we have our finishing adjustments down here. I select the down arrow. You can see that there are different colors or tints or split tones, whatever it is that you want to call. This is where you add your sepia or your cyanotype or your selenium. I'm just going to leave this one black and white. But you can change this if you want to. The vignette. Just like it sounds, you have different types of vignette. This is the lens fall off of, of a normal film camera right here. Like in the old days, I'm going to select probably lens fall off one. And then on the burn edges, if you look at your old photos, a lot of the edges were burnt right in here. It was a vignette, but it was also some burning in there because they wanted to put the center of attention right in here. So if you look at the burn edges, you can see that it's very much like a vignette, but it's just kind of like dodging and burning as well. So I'm going to select one of these 
and uh, that's a little bit too much for me because it I lose a lot of the information in here so I'm going to select edges right here and then I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to boost this up in brightness just a little bit more right there that's the great thing about leaving this thing up this little uh, adjustment selective adjustment right here and then the last thing that you can do with the finishing is that you can add different types of frames but I'm just not one into frames like that so I'm going to select off At the very bottom this information right here is your histogram so that you can see how your photo looks as far as uh, where it is on the dark side or on the light side and are you getting very close to clipping anything and so right in here I'm starting to lose some of my detail it hasn't clipped quite yet in the dark areas and you can see that a lot of the lighter areas uh, I don't have that many all I have is the tips of the trees right there but I like this photo and I'm going to keep it as is the other thing that you can do is you can use the loop right here and what this loop does is that you start on the left hand side and it shows you um, the 10 point zone system right here zero being completely dark and 10 being completely light and you can see what parts of the image are in that zero zone or that super dark zone and as you get towards the middle into the neutral gray you can see how much of the image is in neutral gray and this is something that Ansel Adams used and some of the other people used in zone photography. Once you have all this done, you can compare this to the original image. And then we can split it right there. So we can do a split preview. There was my original image right there. It's not really spectacular. And then if we slide this over, you can see how it darkened the sky. It gave me more detail up here. The only thing I don't really like about this whole thing is that I might want to bring some of this snow back in because I really like that. So that's where you get to see this comparison with this comparison slider. I'm going to turn this comparison slider off for a second and then I'm going to go back up into my selective adjustments. I'm going to add another selective adjustment point right here. I want to add some of the light parts of the snow back in. So I'm going to bring that back up. I really like that, but I don't want to completely get rid of my burning burned edges or my vignette. So I'm going to bring this up. I want to bring this snow a little bit and maybe even a little less contrast so that it looks very snowy and fluffy in there. And I think I like that. So I'm going to save this out and it's going to put it back into Lightroom again. Just remember that when you're editing with Silver Effects Pro 2 from the Nick collection, that it will turn this into a TIFF photo and it is no longer a raw photo. So that is something to consider when you're editing with this plugin. I hope you like that look at Silver Effects Pro 2 by Nick Software. This is Chucky, give me a thumbs up or a like and I'll see you in my next video.